Prince Kerry Kalan was deep in thought for some time. Memories of his youth came crashing through his mind in waves, churning and churning and then fading away to give way to other memories. Kerry Kalan let out a decisive breath, forcefully stopping the waves of memories. What is your opinion? Do you think she still doesn't know the truth? Do you think she will not know that she is Sundara Chola's daughter and sister to all of us? Come again. If he had known all this, would he still have joined the conspirators of the Pandya clan? Would he have placed a little boy on the throne against the Chola clan and crowned him as the king of the Pandya country and the emperor of the Chola empire? Would he have sworn with a knife in his hand that he would stand up to bear the crown? I saw all this happen at midnight near the Tirapurambayam police station. I am surprised to think that Nandini left you alive after seeing so much. Sir. I do not wonder at it, may it not be due to the kindness that naturally dwells in woman. Mighty one. You are unfathomable. You do not know what deceit and deceit dwell in a woman's heart. I do not know for what purpose she has left you alive. But I know in private what she sent for me. Prince. What could be the reason for that? She has brought me to kill me and take revenge on Vera Pandian. Sir. Thinking that some such calamity was about to happen, the younger brat and the Prime Minister sent me away in haste. But they did not listen to my advice not to go to Kadapur. Mighty One! The younger brat and the First Minister are very, very wise. But even they can't stop fate, can they? Who saw that fate has brought me here to make all the soothsayers say about Arulmas Hivarman come true? Valavara! Did Kandhamara shoot an arrow from behind me? Did he really aim at a bear? Me. Did you notice? Did you notice? I did not notice, sir. But I would never admit that Kandhamara was capable of such treachery. Can Kandhamara kill a house guest, much less the emperor's son, with an arrow from behind? I do not think so highly of his wits. I picked up him who lay unconscious stabbed in the back. I went and saved him. When he saw me when he awoke, he thought that I had stabbed him. Then his enmity against me had not changed. But his intellect, though a little dull, was not treacherous. Dude! I don't know how much power a beautiful woman's charm has. It can make even a good man commit unfaithfulness. Sir! I also know a little about the seductive power of women. So I won't be a traitor one day. Aha! Mani Megali, a good girl, will not tempt you to do treacherous things. I don't mean bells, can the twinkling be attractive to the eyes of the full moon? Who do you mean by the full moon? Prince! Don't be angry, I mean the old, younger brat. I! Too much preacher! All the manatee kings in the world are penitent to hold Kundave's hand. Can you even think of such a sister of mine? Sir! Earthly emperors see and enjoy the charm and light of the full moon, only the poor stand and enjoy themselves on the moon. Who can stop them? Yes, there is no use in being angry with you. Knowing that, I sent you to my sister with a lie. You also behaved to her satisfaction. But don't tell this to Parthibendra alone. He is dreaming of becoming the son-in-law of the Chola clan and becoming the king of Thonday country. Sir! It may have been like that until some time ago. Now both Kanamaran and Parthipendra are waiting to do with their heads what Nandini Devi did with her feet. I have been observing it, that is why I am afraid of them. All things considered, it seems necessary that you meet the young queen as soon as possible and tell her all the truth. Dude! I don't think I'd be brave enough. How about you meet her instead of me? Prince! The younger queen won't believe me if I tell her. I've tricked her once and got away with it. So this too can be considered a ruse. But how can I meet Nandini alone? She's in that place. Sir! It will be possible with Manamegali. I will make the necessary arrangements for that. Looks like you've got Manamekali in your hands. Good job. Anyway, if I marry Manamekali to you, I'll be at peace a little. Sir. 
I regard Manamegali as my half-sister. I hope she may have many times more fortune. What are you talking about? Don't you know, Prince? I suppose the maiden Manamegali has a place in the heart of the Crown Prince of the Chola Empire. I spoke a little earlier about Sambhavariyar Kumari. I said that to convey my mind to you. No other woman born in this world, except a young bratty, can match Manamekali in knowledge and character. Only you. If we marry Manamekali, all our problems will be solved. Sambhavarayar and Kanamaran will join us. Palyavatarayar will be left alone. The power of the younger queen will also be weakened. Madhuranthak Devar will not talk about the kingdom later. We can defeat the intrigues of the petty kings and the conspiracy of the Pandya country's dangers at once. All right, brother. But I have not come to Kadampur to get married. Some great danger is approaching. I say, listen. Palyavatarayar is going to come with a great army when he returns with Madhurandaga. Sir. Then what if we also send word to the king of Tirakovalar and make him gather an army? Isn't it better to be careful before anything else? I am thinking about it too. Do you know what I feel every time? I feel like I want to raise this Kadampur palace to the ground and wash away all those who plotted here at the palace gates. I hold my anger in front of my father. If only you had brought him to Kanchi. Prince. It has become Brahma's duty to add their straw to him. Yes, the emperor is getting on well with these rascals. Bats roam the golden mansion I built for my parents in Kanjima. I don't know if I will have the privilege of welcoming them here while I'm alive. I doubt if I'll even leave this Kadapur alive. Prince. You talk like this, and it seems very necessary to ask the Malayan to come with the troops. I'll see if I can send you to do that. Sir. I'm sorry. Their parents have ordered me not to leave them for a moment. You've been doing so well so far. Barthapendra Palavar is idle here. He is suffering without entertainment. Yes, every moment when he does not look at the young queen of Palvur is an age to him. I never dreamed that Parthibendra was so addicted to women's beauty. He is the one who should be sent to Malay Amman. Perfect idea, sir. You're always there to help me if I'm in danger while he's away. Prince. I don't think there is anyone in the world who dares to harm you, whoever, or not. Have you seen the brave old men who spoke of them in their absence tremble at the sight of you? Brother. I am not afraid of any son who can fight with a knife in his hand. I am not afraid of the likes of Kanamaran who can shoot an arrow in the back. You say that about Kanthamaran again. Listen, brother. I fear only the guile in a woman's heart. My heart aches when I think of what she harbors. Every glance she casts at me mysteriously is like a spear thrusting into my breast. My hands and feet burn at the thought of it. Sir. I agree that Nandini Devi's treachery is to be feared. I have realized how terrible malice dwells in her heart. When I think of her leaving me alive, I sometimes fear what she may be plotting. But is this not because she does not know the truth? Then there's nothing to worry about after that, right? You think so? Valavara. You are a villain. But an innocent child who does not know the nature of women. If Nandini finds out that she is Sundara Chola's Kumari, her enmity against all of us will increase a hundredfold. Even if she says that she will be crowned as the Empress of the Tanjore Empire, her anger will not stop. Prince. If you think so. Hand over the responsibility to me. I will tell Nandini the true story. I will also try to calm her anger. Even you can't do that, friend. No one can stop Nandini's anger. Listen to me. To save our Chola clan, either I must die, or she must die, or both. I will kill her with the same sword that killed Vera Pandian. Prince. What terrible speech is this? Mighty one. Is it a crime to kill a life to protect an empire? What if she is a woman? What if she is my half-born sister? She is not a woman in fact, she is a phantom of the mystical Mahini who has become a woman. If she is left alive, 
this Chola Empire, which has been flourishing since the time of Vijayalaya Chola, will crumble to pieces. What is that? Aditha Karikalan asked in horror and looked back. At that moment, a little distance from where they were, something was happening among the bushes. Both of them knocked off their horses and went closer. A very unusual sight was seen. A wild boar and a leopard were fighting fiercely. Aha! Here is the man we sought! said Kari Gallen. Looks like the leopard is going to put us out of work! Vandiyathevan said. You think so? Keep watching! said Kari Gallen. Both of them were watching the fierce battle between the leopard and the boar for a while. The leopard pounced on the pig and tried to attack it with its claws and teeth. But the tough hide of the wild boar gave little sway to the claws and teeth of the tiger. But whenever the pig ran fast and knocked the leopard away and rubbed it against the ground and the roots of the trees, the leopard was badly injured. The boar's fangs tore the leopard's skin to shreds. The last time the leopard was knocked down by the pig, it lay dead. Brother! The leopard is dead! The pig is coming back at us. We must be ready. Saying that, Kari Gallen locked the arrow in his bow and let go. The arrow pierced the pig's neck. The pig looked back, scratching its neck. Observed the two horses and their occupants for a moment. Then saw a leopard once. So it seems that nothing will happen anymore. It rushed towards the horses with ferocious fury. Kari Kalan struck the horse he was riding before locking another arrow in his bow. The horse, which had moved slightly due to the speed of the attack, stumbled and fell down only to have its hind leg caught in a tree root. Kari Kalan got caught under the horse. The boar moved back a little and again ran towards the horse lying on the ground.